This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello and welcome to Perfect Person, the show where I'm perfect and you're a person. I'm here with Becky Aversberger, podcaster, comedian, Instagram beauty wellness god. My god. <laughs> I love that comedian got added to like my bio Do you recently. not consider yourself a comedian? You know what? I don't. Mm. But I was at a Charlie Puth concert. Yeah. Charlie my- Poop. Charlie Poop. Mm-hmm. Um, what sound is this, Charlie? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a C. <laughs> that's a C major. Yeah. Um, and a girl came up to me and was like, oh my God, I love you. I yeah. watch all your stuff. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. That's so sweet. Like, yeah. That's so sweet. And she's like, you are like my favorite comedian. Like your stuff is so funny. And I was like, <laughs> am I a comedian? Add that to the resume. <laughs> All right. Well, you're very funny and you're, you have a podcast that's in the comedy category. That's true. That's yeah, true. I think true. I think of myself as like witty. Yeah. Or like plucky. I like that. You know what it is? Cause it's, it's not, you're not doing like a very serious, I mean, sometimes you have wellness content that is not gravely serious, but yeah. more genuine. <laughs> This is my serum. <laughs> this is the <laughs> serum I use. Very <laughs> test. Um, but, uh, but no, Becky, I'm glad to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. I was waiting patiently. Um, <laughs> I saw Eugene on the podcast. Yeah, right. Will's been on a few times. I know, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was excited to get the call. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, your husband has been asking to be on the show, but I said no. Uh, yeah, he's kind of needy. Yeah, he's he's, little, he's like, you know, relax. We got it. We yeah, got we it. get it. <laughs> um, but uh, before we got into the uh, calls, yes. I had a couple wellness uh, things <laughs> to run by you. All right, Miles. To get the <laughs> Becky Haversberger seal of approval. Okay, all okay? right. Okay, this mm-hmm. is your world. Yeah. Skin care, mm-hmm. sort of holistic. You're coming into the podcast studio sometimes for the other podcasts I produce with a big green vase of <laughs> fucking liquid. And you're always sipping on new things with a uh-huh. sort of dispose, uh, you reusable straw, <laughs> not disposable straw. <laughs> I would never. Becky no, just kills kidding. turtles. Just kidding. Everyone can she use whatever straw they want. Water a turtle. <laughs> Don't <laughs> tell them. <laughs> it was one time. <laughs> it was one time. But I have several items that I don't know what I feel about them. And so I wanted to get your seal of approval Love. on whether or not I should be ingesting them, caring about them, et cetera. That is perfect. I'm going to add doctor to my yeah. list of qualifications as well. Well, right. Exactly. Because yeah. I'm not a doctor. No. Because I'm better than a doctor. Yeah, and mm-hmm. you know what is a doctor, but a person who gives advice, right? On me- you know, on like medical, medical things. on medical stuff. And I've seen every so. episode of Grey's Anatomy, which arguably makes me. I don't think it makes me having gone to medical school, school, but in a way, well, you I, could say that. You could say it. I did take my brother's EMT practice quiz with him. And, That's doctor. <laughs> yeah, and I was correct. You were right. I was correct. Yes, I passed. I That's passed huge. the practice test. CMOS. <laughs> Talk to me about it, Becky. I don't know what it is. So is I've it seen from it, the water? It's on TikTok. Uh-huh. People are like, this is sea moss. And it's like a jelly mm. thing that's $19. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you need it. But what is it supposed to do? I saw this one girl talking about it, but only in a sense of other people were stitching her to make fun of it. Oh, okay, got mm-hmm. it. Yeah. I think it's one of those things that has like maybe some minerals. When I see a little jelly like that, that's got, you know, fancy people eating it for whatever reason. Uh-huh. <laughs> like cool TikTokers who are like, yeah, like I'm like hot, young and cool and I'm going to like eat a spoonful of this nasty stuff. Yeah. That's why I want to have it. I think you're going to shit your pants. Probably. If you, if you eat it. It does <laughs> seem like, it's like they sell it at the beverage section of Erewhon, but it is not a beverage. Ugh. You can't drink it unless through a boba straw. Okay, so you spoon it. You spoon it. Mm. I would say it sounds like a waste of money. It probably does. Sound sounds like, like a waste, waste of money. money. Yeah. And like, if it just comes from the ocean, can you just go to like Santa Monica? Can you just like <laughs> scoop it from the? You don't want to be drinking the from ocean. the ocean. <laughs> you don't want to be in that ocean, Becky. <laughs> People die in that mm-hmm. ocean. Vitamin ocean. water. <laughs> the brand? Yeah. <laughs> is it good for you? What is good for you? Yeah, you know you what? Know? And I'm pr- I appreciate the question. that you That's- bring this up because I actually have a reasonable feeling like health. What does that even mean? <laughs> 
Like, I, <laughs> are you, you, did you take up smoking recently? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like doing a hookah. Now I'm, that you're going to be a dad, you're like, God, go have a cigar every day. Uh, no, I, I've tried to like cigars before. Yeah. Not for me. No, not for me. At like no. a special occasion. I'm like, maybe this will be, and it's no, it's never <laughs> what I want. But uh, no, I just feel like it's like, there's a pro and con to everything. And then it's like, some people it's like, oh, eggs. That's good for you, right? Food neutrality. <gasps> Food neutrality. As <laughs> our good friend it. Rachel said one time, one and we time. never let her forget it. That's right. That's <laughs> absolutely right. But I think I just am like, uh, you know, I I, uh, I don't know. I don't know if vitamin water is good for you, if it's just marketing. I feel like it's just marketing, but maybe like alkaline water. That sounds to me like real. I don't know why. Yeah. I have no evidence to back that up. I have yeah. nothing to support that claim. But something about it makes me go like, yeah. See, because I'm a tap kind of bitch. What? In LA? Oh, yeah. Miles. I'm drinking tap from the faucet. No. Is that, what is the badness about it though? Is it that it's got... <laughs> It's got it's got shit in it. The it's LA water is like yucky. I thought the LA water was supposed to be good. It's, it's yucky. No, 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 no. Okay. Oh, maybe I guess if you live near a, a reservoir. I yeah. I, I maybe you know I gotta do the filter lifestyle. I think that the Brita yeah. to me, if they made a filter, mm -hmm. I probably should just put the filter on my thing on my yeah. faucet. We did do that at yeah. our house because the area we live in, one of the scary things when you <gasps> buy a house is they give you this report that's like, here's the nuclear power plant that oh, down the street. No. And like, here's the levels of all these things that are going to wow. kill you in the neighborhood. Yeah. Um. So we did get a water filter for the house because, mm. well, I also think, because you lived in New York, New yeah. York tap water is good. It's really tap. good. Chicago tap water, it tastes good. It tastes I just good, think yeah. LA water tastes bad. It probably isn't good, but to me, it's just the like, it's the, uh, it's just the time. I don't want to wait for the Brita to do its little Brita thing. Mm -hmm. And also not to like talk to you about, to, I won't name, there's another <laughs> brand that I tried out. Okay. Well, with my smart pitcher thing. <laughs> and it, I could, it fucking took hours for it to process through the filter. And I was like this, and I did it with two of them and uh, both no. of them were, and I was like, this is not, that's not do. the way. That's not the way. This is not the way. Mandalorian mm -hmm. much? <laughs> <laughs> Baby Yoda much? <laughs> um, uh, and Gwyneth Paltrow, thoughts? Bad. Yeah. Bad. <laughs> Bad. I Bad. agree. Ma'am, she needs to not. And I think the last thing I, I, I'm going to run by you, and this is the calibration round, before we okay. sort of get to the real advice that people are calling it about. They're, yep. they're dying to hear, what. when will Becky tell me to break up with my boyfriend? When will, you know, all that love, stuff. Love. Um, <laughs> what is the bare minimum that I need to be doing to my skin so that I look fresh, fun, flirty, and fine? Sunscreen. Really? You need to wear sunscreen. That's like the number one. Yeah. You need sunscreen. Yeah. So you just like wash your face. You can get like a combo two-in-one moisturizer sunscreen if you need it uh -huh. to be quick and easy. Yeah. But sunscreen is like, it's going to make you look so much younger later on. Mm -hmm. And it's also like melanoma is bad. They'll like cut out like part of your face. Yeah, we don't want When melanoma. you get it, you don't want melanoma. Sunscreen is something that I've only been doing at the beach. <clears throat> okay. Previously. Okay. And I probably should. Or when I go skiing. Because I remember this girl, this girl, <laughs> this girl came back from a ski trip when I was 13 mm -hmm. and she was so fucking sunburned. Because <gasps> this. Yeah. It, it rebounces. Yeah. It rebounces. It rebounces. It, the sun rebounces um, right off the snow mm -hmm. and into your face and it is piping bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'll do sunscreen there. But every day, even if I'm just like, oh, I'm kind of in my house most of the day, it's just like the rays, it's everywhere, man. Yeah, I would say <laughs> the rays, trails, the birds are coming for us. <laughs> um, I would say like, if you're going from zero, you know, yeah. from only wearing sunscreen at the beach, mm -hmm. if you could just wear sunscreen when you leave your house, House, yeah. Make that your next step. And yeah. then once you get like, once you're good at that. This is good. Then you can go up to every day and just wear mm. it even if you're in your house. This is really good advice. <clears throat> yeah. A lot of times the things I'm looking for is someone to just tell me explicitly what to have. <laughs> <laughs> and this, perfect. Sunscreen, yeah. I'll buy it. I'll buy it buy on it. Amazon. Buy it. Well. well. <laughs> 
other stores you can buy it at. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe we do a local. Yeah. We yeah. do a local. Shop local, especially Shop. your neighborhood. Yeah, there's some, There's. oh, I'm sure I could there's, spend a pretty penny on a fancy sunscreen. Yeah. Just down the block. You'd also just get a cheapy. You do want it to be though, you know what? There was this, he was a real doctor, <laughs> came into the place where I work. Yeah. And he said, your sunscreen should be 20% zinc. Really? Yeah. To be like zinc oxide or whatever. And zinc's the stuff that to makes your face look white. 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 Yeah. 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 So obviously it doesn't work for everyone, I will admit. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, if you're on the fairer side, going for something that's 20% zinc is like yeah. an SPF like 18 or something like okay, that. Okay, got it. I yeah. want to get into it. I want to find a sustainable routine that's going to get me there. Because I'm already in yeah. the bath culture mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm just a hop, skip and a jump away from like a full cabinet full of fancy little bottles and mm. scents. And, mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You're one step away from being Gwyneth. Ah, yeah. <laughs> I consider myself the modern day Gwyneth Haltrow. You know, that is how I would describe you as well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Goop. Goop. <laughs> I'm always Yanni signing. Yeah. <laughs> Yoni what? No, Yoni steaming. Oh, steaming. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yoni steaming. Yeah. The egg. Mm -hmm. the egg. The egg. Yeah. Well, that's about enough of that, Becky. Um, Becky, the people have been calling in and they need your help. Love. So what qualifies you to be a perfect person today? What qualifies mm. you to help out the people as my freelance sidekick on this fine Sunday? Um, I think I'm really well qualified to mm -hmm. give advice because yep. I do it often. Yeah. On my own podcast. That's right. You can sit with us. Correct. Um, I've also lived through some traumas. Yeah. Lived through some absolutely very recent traumas. Yeah. So I feel like I feel like I <laughs> I feel like I've looked up a lot of quotes about yeah. mm -hmm. moving on. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, sure. opening your mind. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. but not too open. Not too open. <laughs> I don't want to be that open minded. Yeah, yeah. Got to stay a little close. Got to stay a little close. A little close sometimes. So yeah, yeah I that. think I think that's what qualifies me as I'm. Yeah, I would agree with yeah. that. I appreciate that. Before we get to the calls, just a reminder: if you like the show, please rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, etc. And if you love the show, consider joining the Patreon, where we have extended episodes of this show, where we talked about Becky getting banned from Barnes and Noble. And uh, also an exclusive show <laughs> called Perfect Person Platinum. Uh, that's just a fresh little show every week where I give a masterclass on how to live flawlessly, Becky. Miles Nation, rise up. That's right. <laughs> Smiles Nation Hive, rise up. Um, all right, we get a voicemails. And as always, if you want to, uh, if you want to call in and leave a voicemail, you can follow the Insta Instagram account for more details. We got this first voicemail here. Bada bing, bada bing. I'm looking for some advice saying thank you. I just did a group project and I did 0% of the work in a group project and I'm looking for the best way to say thank you for having not helped at all. Uh, I hope you call me back. Okay. So, <laughs> so he wants to put effort into saying thank you for taking, for the other person doing all the effort. Yeah, it feels like the effort is maybe too little too late here. But I think, you know, everyone deserves, uh, well, not everyone. Some people deserve second chances. And um, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> not everyone, but some people, some people, some people certainly do deserve second chances. Yeah. Maggie. And so I think that like, there probably is something that he could do to give the group project the sort of oomph that they need, but it's gotta be big. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I do appreciate his self awareness of being yeah. like, I didn't do anything. I uh, yeah, and that's the honestly, that's half the battle. Yeah, I think most people who don't participate in group projects, yeah, don't know that they're not participating. Totally. Have you ever? I mean, it seems like uh, you were somebody who was fully involved in the group project from day one, even if there were stragglers that weren't involved at all. Yeah, I yeah. would rather honestly just do it myself most of the time. Yes, yeah, same. And I like was not mad. Nope. You know, yeah. I was like, live your life. No, never. I was always the person who was like, I mean, I'm good with computers and stuff. So if there was any sort of presentation mm -hmm. that needed design, whatever, I was always like, yeah, I can fully do that if you guys give me whatever. Yeah. Um, And, you know, I, I just, but there were people that I was just like, got it, cool. You're in my little black book. If I ever, if you, <laughs> there were several people in college that I was just like had classes with. I was like, got it, copy that. No hard feelings. But if I ever hear your name in a context where I can help you out, no. <laughs> I agree. I feel like that did happen a lot with like acting scene partners. Yeah. Where someone was like, really never 
knew their lines ever. And yeah. I was like, well, now you're making me look bad. But uh, also I'm a little in awe of you because now you're showing me what a good actor you are. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I'm bad. <laughs> maybe you don't need to know maybe, the lines. <laughs> maybe the lines are just a guidebook. <laughs> yeah. I remember actually one time of the little black book, I um, I was in a, I, I was interviewed by the college paper. Okay. About my internship at Late Night with Seth Meyers. <gasps> Whoa. And I was like super excited to do it, whatever. And it was a fully paid internship. Yeah. And I remember, I, I don't have, know this person's name, but I know that I took it down in a note because I literally thought to myself, <laughs> if I ever have the opportunity, if this resume ever co comes across my desk years from now, I will say no. <laughs> Because she misquoted me and said that I didn't get paid for the internship. And at NBC, you sign a thing that's like, don't talk about how much you get paid and whatever, yeah. even though it was fully paid. And so I was like, you can't. And it was like unpaid internships for struggling students was like the headline. It was like this thing about like- <laughs> For sad, struggling I like, students. I got to intern at NBC. I'm like some dumb college student. Like, what are you talking about? And I was so mad. And she was like, it went out in print. And then she was like, I can't change it. Well, it, you should issue a retraction. It was crazy. If you're a true journalist. And if you're listening out there, you done did me dirty. And I'll never forget. <laughs> I don't remember who they are anymore. I do like the idea that she's like a patron now. That's her way of like paying you back. <laughs> you <laughs> she's felt like, bad. Yeah, she's a patron of the show. A friend yeah, of the pod. Absolutely. Well, it was just so <laughs> funny. Like it was clear that she wanted, she was hungry for a scoop. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, who's not around here? You gotta get those clicks. Yeah, well, not so much recently, but <laughs> <laughs> let's give this person a call back and see what they're willing to do for us. Hello? Hello, we heard that you did zero work on a group project and we're here to try to help you find restitution. Uh, I, yeah. <laughs> so what is your name and where are you calling from? My name is Emil, I'm calling from Oregon. Okay, Emil from Oregon. Uh oh, Emil, you've been a little naughty. We <laughs> I have. <laughs> Emil, tell us what class this was for. Mm -hmm. uh, this is for a geography class. Oh. And we did an assignment on water tributaries. And I did 0% of the work. Now explain a water tributary to me as if I didn't have any idea what that was. As if we've never heard the word tributary <laughs> yeah. before in our lives. Uh, just pretend. It and is, <laughs> yeah. It's a river that goes into a larger river. Got it. To, got it. That's good. And well, I mean, at least you picked that up having done zero of the work on the project. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talk us through your emotional process here because it seems like you feel bad. And, uh, you know, I, I want to help you uh, bring these people who picked up your slack some joy. Mm -hmm. Well, it was just one person. It was a three-person project. Got it, yeah. And this guy did the entire assignment like two weeks before it was due. Wow. Okay. And okay. kind of like, you know, we got all our, all our numbers and mm -hmm. he told us like, I'm sharing the slides with you. I'm sharing the things with you. Add things if you want. But it was due in two weeks, so I didn't. Yeah. And then he did the whole assignment. And then he wrote out the script for us to present with. Wow. Um, and, and were there group texts that were like, hey, let's meet up and talk about this? Or like, hey, here's some stuff that you guys could do. Or was that sort of not a part of uh, the communication? It wasn't. He was. He just did the whole thing. Okay. Interesting. Very nice. Interesting. Okay. So, okay. Got it. So I'm, I'm less mad at you now. Yeah. I, I called, I okay. came in hot. <laughs> I was thinking you were the catalyst for everyone who didn't do group projects for me when I was in school. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm seeing that you are not innocent, but you're not necessarily the great evil that I thought you were. A victim of circumstance. Yeah. yeah a victim of circumstance, Emil. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Emil. Hello. Hi. Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay. So you're looking for a fun thing. Now, do you see this guy around in school with you? I see him in my one class. Got it. Um, and every time I look at him, I'm like, wow, he's such a good student and I'm also here. Right. Hmm. So this is sort of a front of the class type of guy. Yeah, he knows a lot. He knows a lot. A smarty. So maybe what you need to get him is a really smart gift. Becky? Oh, I mean, it sounds like he actually got a lot of joy out yeah. of doing the project by himself. I think so too. And not having to include any other dum dums. Yeah, that's right. You I know? think so. Maybe he would have felt held back 
by uh, working with you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I, maybe, <laughs> but I could have offered help, yeah, which I no. didn't. <laughs> I'm sure you could have helped. I'm sure you could have helped, but it feels like he was just like, I'll just do it myself. Like, it doesn't seem like he's mad at you for not helping. No, but I did hear from someone else in the class that he knew that the other person did the, all the work. Um, so he certainly is talking about it, which uh, might mean there's like some resentment there that is unaddressed. Ooh. Yeah. And, and you know what it is? It's like, he's running with the baton and he's like, Hey, come on. Like I'll run the baton, but, uh, but yeah, we'd love some, you know, uh, he's, he doesn't want to make you guys do it because he wants you to want to help him with the water tribution project. <laughs> Tri tributes. Yeah. Tributes. Tributary. Yeah. <laughs> Tributary project. So tell me what you know about this guy. He has a girlfriend who knits him hats. Oh, oh, this guy's got a girlfriend. Um, Damn. <laughs> Emil, I'm not saying one of you is looking a little bit like a loser right now, yeah. but... Uh oh Emil. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> We're just kidding, Emil. Yeah, so this guy's got a girlfriend mm -hmm. who's, you know, just making him hats. He's happy. He's satisfied. His life is perfect. I, I assume so, yeah. He's everything he you want Safeway. to be. <laughs> he works at Safeway? <laughs> yeah. So does he get um, discounts at um, groceries? Is that a grocery store? Yeah, that's awesome. I, that I is assume so. awesome. Well, I always thought about that. I was like, if I worked at Trader Joe's, I I would it would be huge. It would be it it's would like be half great. off. And everyone seems like they do like working there. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's a show. But well, they're they all super like horny. It's uh, to me the Trader Joe's employees are like <laughs> <laughs> horned up, and it's like so it's like so much flirting. I, it's like almost a little tiring. Anyway, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Emil. So <laughs> let's get back to your problem. Mm -hmm. I think that if this guy's got hats and stuff like that, a breakfast sandwich would go a long way. <laughs> breakfast sandwich, or a fancy, okay. you know, or a fancy coffee of some kind, like. Hey, I actually, and you know, here's how you soft launch it because you don't want to just show up and he'll, he'll, he'll be like, you got me a gift. Like he could humiliate you in front of the class because this guy's got the whole thing wrapped around his finger. That's true. So if you show up with two, hey, I got an extra breakfast sandwich and uh, it was, uh, I just wanted to say, I really appreciate uh, you working on that project and you sort of drop off a little breakfast sandwich for him to be like, you know, maybe he'll eat it. Even if he doesn't want it, he might appreciate it. What if my class is at 3.30 and I can't get him a breakfast or anything? Okay, I have an idea. Becky, go. Amelia, you have to go with me on this one, though. Yeah. Because it's a little okay. involved. Here we go. Okay, he's smart. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the unicorn yeah. sound is now mine. Yeah. Um, he seems like a smart cookie. He seems like a good student. Mm -hmm. What do good students need, Emil? Uh, pencils. A planner, a I mean, planner. A planner. Oh, okay. Okay, an adorable planner. And then you can put a little note <laughs> on one of the good. days. Put a note on one of the days and be like, lunch with a meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like what a serial killer would do. <laughs> giving you a planner with dates marked in for when you can hang out. Put some pictures in there and be all <laughs> Put your headshot every every third you month. Draw him pictures. You should draw him. <laughs> I drew you some art. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is his name? Kai. Kai, Kai is a cool name. He sounds cool. He this sounds guy really fucks cool. For sure. <laughs> that, guy, that guy is getting his girlfriend pregnant for sure. He's gonna impregnate his girlfriend, man. You gotta get in there before. So I think you gotta get yeah, the planner is funny because it's like this guy doesn't need a planner. He's so brilliant. He's already got it on lock. I guess if you have a phone too, it kind of takes the fun out of the planner. Yeah, like I remember the last time I bought a planner was like before I had a smartphone. It was like, oh, this will be cool to keep like my calendar. <laughs> Becky's crying. I am like, cannot stop. I tickled myself. I tickled myself oh with my that God. one. I, I think that, I mean, <laughs> of, although like a moleskin is Ooh. not bad. That's sort of the planner Ooh, yeah. adjacent. That's a nice one. It's fancy and it's like this guy's got a fucking organizational system already in his head. You know what I mean? That's true. So he's going to be able to make a planner out of a moleskin. A moleskin? That's how they're spelled. A moleskin? That's how they're spelled, Becky. You know what I mean? Like a, a little moleskin. 
I mean, that's going to run you about 20 bones. And a breakfast sandwich yeah. is like a decent option, but at 3 p.m., I, I get what you mean. The egg could be soggy. Yeah. The bread could be bad. It'll be cold. Yeah. It could be cold. So a burrito is another <laughs> sort of big swing you could do. <laughs> hey, I... They gave me an extra burrito. <laughs> Create an elaborate storyline behind how you got the burrito. So that doesn't sound yeah. like you're really giving him a gift. My car got broken into. <laughs> so I was and late. left the burrito. I left the burrito. Yeah. Like I think that a moleskin is like a nice thing that everyone enjoys. Like I, I've gotten so many gifted moleskins, but I don't use them always. I just like, I like having them. And they're pretty. And they're pretty. Yeah. And if this guy. Yeah, I got if, a couple. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Um, Bra you, you dirty dog, you. <laughs> you dirty dog. You got a moleskin for every day of the week, man. I mean, I think that, yeah, like a fancy little item like that, that's like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it says thank you because this guy did give you probably a good grade because the teacher was like, Kai is hot. and He's got this girlfriend. He's coming with a knit hat. He's doing all the work. Woo! Yeah, I should check my grade, though. I don't even know what I got. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, you, you don't know what grade you got yet? Oh, you could have fucking changed uh, it. No, I, ha I, haven't, I haven't checked. <gasps> Emil, no gifts you, until you know you got the A. You got to look at the A. You got to <laughs> okay, get it. Yeah. If you got an A, that's a mole skin. If you got a C, that's a egg sandwich from yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> but I think, yeah, you want to show some sort of gratitude here, uh, Emil. And your head's in the right place. Um, so make sure you give Kai a night he'll never forget. <laughs> And maybe draw a little picture in the mole scene. Maybe draw that honestly yeah. would that is cute on one of the pages, Just not the one first page, one. No, flip to the middle and no. draw a little like ah, thanks for the project, and it's like a little image of cartoon you. Yes, floating down a tri a tributary. <laughs> that's not bad, oh. Becky. That's pretty cute. That huh? could be pretty that's good. A good idea. Or it's like a drawing of your teacher. It's like I think the other like fun. <laughs> Like, like you're teaching with devil horns or something. You know what I mean? It's like, well, we yeah. hate class, but I guess this guy loves class. Yeah. So actually don't do that. Don't do that. Don't take that advice. But Emil, we hope this has been helpful because it's certainly been helpful for us. Yes. Thank you. No problem at all. You tell Kai, we say what up and you have a fantastic day. I will. You too. All right. Bye. bye. If you're like me, sometimes after a, long hard day of work or maybe a long hard day of play you want to get zooted sometimes i'll take a little thc edible and it will zoot me so hard that i'm not able to make dinner there's nothing worse than being too stoned and so when i want to be just the perfect amount of zooted i turn to my friends at diet smoke for their delicious Delta 8 and Delta 9 THC gummies. Okay, I took a Diet Smoke gummy last night and it was fantastic. I had a giant bowl of yogurt and granola. Then I went back for a second little peanut butter toast and before you know it, I was in the bathtub watching my favorite show on an iPad. Now, all of Diet Smoke's THC is derived from American grown hemp, meaning they're both federally legal, which is wild. And each product is a lab test result for potency and safety. Diet Smoke is legal in most states, and it's non-prescription, so no convos with sketchy dealers or doctor's office. You just decide you want THC, and they ship it right to your door. Use promo code PERFECT at checkout now for 20% off your entire order at dietsmoke.com. That's dietsmoke.com, promo code PERFECT for 20% off. Diet Smoke's products are not for use or sale to people under the age of 21. Please use responsibly, and go and check it out, baby. It's federally legal, so if you're curious at all, I think it's a great opportunity to be able to relax on a weekend or after work. Enjoy yourself, baby. Now back to the show. Another happy customer. Becky. We fucking crushed that. <laughs> That was so good. Really good advice. That was like, it yeah. made me cry. It was so good. It was so good. You like, were I weeping. Was, <laughs> I was touched. I was touched by that <laughs> advice. Ugh. I mean, because I just, to me, people, everyone wants a little gift. It doesn't even matter what it is. If someone was like, hey, I got you something, and it was like a box of fresh pens, I'd be stoked on it. Yeah. And yeah. I also feel like Emil was walking around with a lot of guilt. He doesn't have to feel like He that. doesn't need that, especially if you don't know what grade you got. Why are you already <laughs> thinking about what gift to give this guy? He could be a dodo and you don't know it. A hundo. Yeah, th this could be just like whatever it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? This could be not a good project. Although he did present the project. So it's like all the prep work was done and he yeah. came in at the end to save the day. 
I found that I would sometimes do all the prep work and do the present presenting because I was an extrovert and I did theater. And it was easy for me to be like, you know, here's the fucking whatever it was. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Um, but um, but wow, uh, <laughs> whew, that really brings me back to group projects. I remember one? I had I had a. Uh, do you have any like? Were you good? At, are you good at getting up early? A getting a what? Getting up early. Oh my god! I thought you said getting up early, and I was like, getting up early. What's up early? That means some fucking perverted. Um, yeah, I'm very. I wake up at like about six thirty. You wake up at six (laughs) thirty? Yeah, I went to the grocery store today at eight, and it was the best. It was Trader Joe's. Actually, I love Trader Joe's. But yeah, yeah, that's actually. I've been trying to wake up a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, we we like had to move a bunch of shit at our house. Our ceilings got replaced. It was a whole fucking thing. Oh yeah, yeah. But so we had to move our curtains, and I intentionally didn't put them back because I'm trying to train myself to wake up a little bit earlier Mm -hmm. because I'm gonna have to wake up at all hours of every fucking day. Yeah, very soon. So you're also gonna need those curtains back once. Yes, we will need. No, no, no. We will have blackout curtains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, (laughs) Blackout curtains. Make sure that yeah, yeah, baby's asleep. <laughs> but um, I actually do really like when I happen to wake up around six thirty, and mm-hmm. I'll, I'll go to the store. Sometimes I'll go to the store at eight, and it just is like that is a good feeling. It's the best. Yeah, it's and the, the best. days longer because of it. I think. Yeah. Anyway, Becky, um, what's a piece of advice that you have from your own life? Something you've been trying recently that you're <laughs> psyched about. Ooh, something I'm psyched about. Could be a product or a behavior. Honestly, I've been using the hose more recently. Oh. And it's been really good. Um, I've been trying to drink more water recently. That's not bubbly. Yeah. Because uh, sometimes I go a little hard on the bubbles. Yeah, that can make me, I mean, clearly burpy. I burp him to the mic several yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. So I have started in the morning mm. when I'm doing my skincare and I do mm. my little gua sha where you like put a little. You do the gua sha? I do the gua sha. Do you I believe do in the gua sha? Yeah. <laughs> I do. I think there are. I mean, it's, I think it'll, it's, I think it works. I think it works. Yeah. yeah. I think there are, there are plenty of uh, people in Eastern cultures yeah. that use it. And no, 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 like for it. sure. Um, you oil up your face and then you kind of push. You're, uh-huh. like, you're like molding everything. Yeah you're, yeah. you're draining all the, it feels nice. It does feel yeah. nice. Sarah has a gua sha and I've been using it. So every once in a like while, it. I'll mm. just kind of go to town on my face with that thing. You're not too hard. Well, you don't want to go too hard. Well, it's a good reason. A little bit hard. <laughs> um, but while I do that, I drink a full big old thing of water and yeah. that's how long I gua sha. I find that like a huge part of my, when I feel healthy, it's because I like chugged water yeah. while I was doing whatever it was. Yeah. I was in the tub, I'm chugging water. <laughs> and like, I have like a big thing of water. I'm like eating a nice salad, but mm-hmm. then I'm like j- gunking it down. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Yeah, I yeah. feel like that's a big, that's good. Yeah, that's my, that's my advice. Drink more water. That's huge. Drink more water. I need a water bottle that's sleek and cool. And I kind of want to get one of those fucking dumb water bottles that has the like. <laughs> no, the time, the times on it. Have you seen those? I have seen those, <laughs> but no, it's the one where you like press it and it's like, we are radiating your water with nuclear radiation. So it's the purest water ever. It they talks like, to you? No, but it shoots rays into the water. That's like, it's sterilizing the water in a way that's so unnecessary in 2022. But it like, it's like a filtering system, but it's uh-huh. using UV light to purify the water of any bacteria that you might need. It sounds heavy. Like it to put is. your water in that and have it something that's It weighs like the size like of a electronic. car battery. <laughs> no, it's, it's not too heavy, <laughs> but it's like, I think I just like that it's kind of like cool and futuristic looking, mm, even mm. though it's wholly unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. Any gadget I really am pretty You into. are a gadget. You really gadget want that one mug that they- Want? That, the one that they won't send us. Oh, I Becky, I have two. <laughs> Ember? Yeah. Ember mug, if you're listening out there, I have- personally converted <laughs> 10 of my friends to buy Ember mugs. And that's not even including the people that I am hawking it to yeah. on all sorts of large platforms. Yeah. I, I, I love the Ember mug. And I, in fact, my new routine, I have Ember regular and I put the Ember, uh, I make a Chemex, okay. right? And I, that's, a, that's two cup. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a two cup pour over. <laughs> First cup's going to the Ember mug and that's co- coming down to a simmer uh-huh. at exactly 135 degrees, which is the temperature that I think is a perfect sip. Wow. While that's doing its thing, uh-huh. I'm putting the second cup in the Ember mug travel. So that way, once I'm finished with this cup, boom, second perfectly temperatured cup, then I'm sucking down 
at 8 a.m. Becky. How many cups of coffee are you? Do you drink any coffee like before you use your Ember mugs? Those are your coffees. No, that's not my coffee. Okay, that's your coffee. I'm just making coffee and then putting it in the Ember mug. Okay. okay. What do you think the Ember mug is doing? <laughs> the way you said that made me think you don't know what it does. No, it just eats it, right? Do you eat any, do you eat any coffees before your Ember mug? I was it, like, it eats it. What? It, it eats it, right? It, it, yeah, it heats it's temperature it. temperature regulates. It heats it, but it only heats it to the exact temperature. So if it's at 135, okay. degrees, if it's over 135 degrees, it'll cool down until it hits the temperature. Okay. I can't, I have to stop <laughs> doing ad reads for a company that's not sponsoring me. I have, I have said enough. Ember, reach out. You just have to bleep their name and everything. I know. <laughs> and then bleep I, like mug. <laughs> I just love it so much. If they, I know if there was a coupon code, I can convert people. Anyway, that's enough. Becky. Enough, Ember. Enough, uh, Ember. Enough. That's enough out of you. Okay, we have another call here. All right. I really don't know what to get my brother for Christmas. I don't know what to get my brother for Christmas. It's hard to get gifts because he's doesn't care about anything. In case you couldn't hear the muffling, uh, she's in the bathroom live and she- <laughs> Woman she, on the street. Woman on the street, live reporting from her own bathroom, trying to get mm -hmm. a gift for her brother for Christmas. Doesn't know what to get him because her brother doesn't care about anything. And what did she, call, she called him a nerd guy and you're a nerd guy? I think something along the, I think it's just you're a guy. Oh, okay. And he's a, but if he's a nerd guy, I'll know exactly what to get him. Yeah. But it sounds like he might be goth. My goth brother needs a gift. <laughs> <laughs> I always try to get a title out in the okay. episode. Yeah, I feel so, like that's a good one. Because he doesn't care about anything. So he might be a little, I mean, teenage boys tend to just be like, whatever. But they what they want yeah. is a gift. Is he a teenager? She's Seems a like teenager? It. Yeah, I think so. I have three siblings and she's in the bathroom because her brother lives in the same house as her. So I imagine okay. that they're young. I don't know. My brother lived at my parents' house for that's true. It could a be handful older. of time. A could handful be, of could time. Could be older too. Yeah. But I guess we'll get all the details we need. We're reporting live. Live from the bathroom. Live from the bathroom. I feel good about this one. This I feel is confident. Yeah. yeah. This will be nice. I feel like I have expertise for this. I haven't thought. Hello? Hello! You called Perfect Person. I'm here with Becky Habersberger. Hello. Hi. Um, and you said that you needed a gift for your brother. Is your brother in the room or can you talk? No, he's not in the room. So tell us about your brother and um, what your problem is. So my brother is 18. And I just have no idea what to get him. Mm -hmm. He is a freshman in college this year. Um, and he just, he doesn't, he's not really like a material person. So he doesn't really care about things, uh -huh. clothes, shoes, things that I would normally get a person. <laughs> he's just kind of not that. <laughs> things that a normal it's human man would things. like. <laughs> things that a yeah. normal person. So uh -huh. uh, how old, well, first of all, how are you, how old are you? And then is your brother like a little goth, like a little emo or is he a nature boy? That's like, Oh my gosh, how I wish. No, no, he's, he's, I'm 21. Okay. So he's, Hi. I have three siblings, but he's like the second to youngest. Got it. Um, he just doesn't care about, things really i mean he likes candy a lot i guess like that's one of his like main personality traits but that's just like boring and what does he do what is he up to during the day what's his major what's his major is good very nice becky good follow-up <laughs> good follow-up journalism school journalism school you know <laughs> <laughs> no no okay so he's currently undecided this makes it even harder for me yeah. What do you get someone who uh, wants for nothing? Exactly. That's why I'm struggling. Girly pop. I got you. <gasps> Becky's got an idea. Oh, you, I got Becky. you. Your brother sounds a lot like my older brother, Michael. Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet. Michael wants for nothing in this world. Yeah. He never gave me any clues. He never, he yeah. just doesn't, he just likes to exist. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what you get for that boy? What's that? Shower gel. Yeah. Moisturizer yeah. and a candle. Oh. I am yeah. oh I have gosh. gotten it for my brother every year for Christmas and it mm -hmm. never fails. Yeah. You're actually so smart because he does have hygiene problems. That's really good. Oh. And honestly, your mm -hmm. call is making me think that I should do a Christmas spectacular <laughs> where everyone just calls and I tell them what to get for their partner. Yes. And uh yeah. but, but anyway, um, so okay. I think shower gel is a good option, mm -hmm. but I want to dive a little deeper yeah. here. You're saying that your brother okay. has no personality, sort of a blank slate. And I'm asking you, is there like, like put, put me in a world. Is your brother a gamer? Is your brother uh, into, oh, okay. is your brother into hiking? Does your brother have a computer? 
Is your brother into technology or does your brother want a knife? Okay. These are really great questions. Is he a gamer? Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't think like as intensely as like, you know, gaming, like, uh, but like, yes, I think he does. Do I know what those games are? No. Cause that's not my world. <laughs> okay. So he might be a gamer tangentially. Um, yeah, but I don't think it's like extreme, like staying up all night. Like, I mean, he has an Xbox, but he's here's not the like problem an too. He's not an incel. Yeah, exactly. Thank okay. you. Here's the problem too. I try to call him and like talk to him, you know, learn more about his life, what's yeah. going on. Uh-huh. He's in his first year of college. He doesn't pick up my call. So I'm like, mm. how am I supposed to find a gift? You're not even calling me. To me, a book is a good, like, I think you're smart and here's a little thing that you can put on your shelf. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The book Kitchen Confidential really meant a lot to me in college by Anthony Bourdain. It's about like a chef. It's a true story, but it's about a chef who just like does a lot of drugs and like fucks in kitchens in New York. And it's kind of like a cool dude book Mm. that's just like, oh man, this guy rocks. Like. I mean, he does like drugs, so... He likes drugs? He likes drugs? Why are you saying that? You did. This opens up a whole new door. Although, he probably shouldn't have been doing them before he was 18. He probably shouldn't have been. We don't condone it. We don't condone it. You shouldn't do it before your brain is dead. It's like, this is like, he will be opening this gift on Christmas in front of my family and my parents. Bong! Get him a bong! (laughs) Get him an apple bong! No, they're very anti-weed. Very anti-weed. Your parents are? They... Yeah, like they think it's like we're like, like that they think it's bad. Like the devil's lettuce, they think that is true. They're like, it's <laughs> they terrible. Think it's the devil's, the devil's lettuce. lettuce. <laughs> That's so funny. I mean, yes, yeah, like my there's... other brother, yeah, is very like he's um he's very stoner, and they basically think that that has like ruined his life. <laughs> That's so funny. So yeah, that would be really bad if I gave them that. They would be like, Abby, you have disappointed the family it's crazy it's times like these where i'm just like it's nice to live in california yeah where it's like yeah yeah this i'm is from ohio sort of, so. yeah uh, i got you i got you yeah okay i got one for you mm-hmm. hit it becky okay all right what if you got him a dare shirt <gasps> because it would kind becky? of be like a little wink your parents would that. be like oh what a nice gift you're telling your brother to that's stay off cool. drugs that's fucking but cool. for you and your brother it's a little <laughs> wink wink yeah this is ex- donors wear really dare yeah. shirts this is, and also that's like a cool shirt that's to wear really at college funny. yeah like a dare shirt is a cool that shirt is to wear a cool shirt. that's yeah. cool becky Woo! that's that good good i think you found it the dare shirt's such a funny shirt to wear at college like if it, picture like any dude in a dare shirt at a freshman dorm is mm-hmm. cool it's like yeah. oh got it cool this guy burns <laughs> yeah you know what i mean <laughs> yeah we also don't condone this but like you're 21 yeah and he's an 18 year old yeah. freshman in college yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there are other things you could other services you we could don't provide. condone it but you know, wink, 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 nudge, you know? Nudge, there's things that older <laughs> siblings really can good idea there's, too. yeah there's things that older siblings can sometimes sometimes acquire and like- buy and just leave on your desk and leave the house yeah and that's actually a good idea too. Yeah. You know, I think that that's a really good freshman. Honestly, I think that, yeah, yeah that's like, that's pretty good, pretty good. And maybe it'll give me some points. I think that a dare shirt and a secret little something mm-hmm. is a really good sibling gift. And your brother's going to be like, Oh shit. My family is actually pretty cool. <laughs> I think you're, I think you're going to nail it. And this year, Santa's bringing home dare. Have a good one. Thanks for calling in. We appreciate it. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Wow. Wow. Another happy customer, Becky. We are just cranking them out. We are cranking it out. Yeah. I know that was good. You know, I'm glad we didn't just stick with shower gel. That's true. We found something better. So she said he was stinky and I wanted to know more about that. Was, was he stinky? She, she said, said stinky? he had hygiene problems. Oh, And yeah. that's why I was like, that's a good, you know. That's tough. At that age, you gotta though, have a conversation. there's a lot of stinky boys. There are. But a sometimes of... you just got to pull people, you know. Yeah. I liked to aside. shower. I really liked to shower when yeah. I was that age. I think I just, although, God, freshman dorm showers are the worst. Oh, they were disgusting. Yeah. They were foul. Really nasty stuff. I don't want to shower with flip flops on. But I do think the dare shirt's going to get him some points. I remember right? in, in, when I was literally that age, I remember <laughs> I had like a bottle of uh, like <laughs> a bottle that my brother's friend who like got me <laughs> a like, Kraken rum. And it was like spiced rum that was 
fucking like 80 proof. It was just so nasty. Don't insult the Kraken. I think we bought Kraken like last year. <laughs> it's definitely in our liquor cabinet right now. <laughs> Are you drinking Kraken now? Not me. I don't Becky. really drink rum. Yeah. But we did. It's. I think like Chicago people really liked it. I always thought it was like a Chicago thing. There's something so funny about somebody being like, my drink of choice, probably rum. <laughs> rum. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. My dad likes when he does, you know, he doesn't drink often, but I rum, on the the rum and Coke sometimes. <laughs> rum and Coke. Uh, I'm like, yeah. okay. That's sort of a classic drink. Yeah. I remember having that a lot when I was younger. Like a mojito. Yeah. Recently I'm Negroni. I, I, my tastes have changed. Are you going to say Negroni Spagliato? No. With a little bit of Prosecco. Because Negroni Spagliato, honestly, and I love Negronis. Negroni Spagliato is probably like wildly sweet and kind of not ideal. Like the yeah. gin brings it a little like- Rumph, but that's not well, sugary. Like an herb, yeah. Yeah, it's an herby flavor. Yeah. You, yeah. I know you two don't like Negronis. I don't, gin gives me nightmares. So I don't drink gin. Gin gives me nightmares? Gin gives me nightmares. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. Every time <laughs> I had. That's maybe the episode title. Gin, gin gives, gives me nightmares. nightmares. It does. Keith loves gin. And during, especially like during the pandemic, I got, well, you were talking about my mocktails. During yeah, the pandemic, yeah, I was right. really into making cocktails. Yeah. Um, so I would look up all these different recipes and make like infused simple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Smack myself. Yeah. Um, I'm drunk right now. No. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'd make all these drinks. Yeah. And at one point we were in a big gin phase. And yeah. I was like, yeah. And it make these <laughs> awesome gin drinks. <laughs> And I sometimes, if I'm stressed, will like talk in my sleep or like get up <laughs> or sometimes <laughs> Keith has, he'll have to tell it on the tripod or the show one yeah. day. But one time I told Keith, our room, if I, if you haven't seen it on Instagram, is yeah. all uh, like French doors right? with no curtain. We don't keep the blinds down. Mm -hmm. They're just open all the time. So at like 2 a.m. <laughs> I woke up and told Keith that there was a man standing outside. Oh my God. I'm like getting chills. That's horrible. And I went back to sleep. And Keith, oh. I literally like said it and then like laid back down. And then Keith like got up, put on his glasses, was like looking around. Oh, that's horrible. Uh, but I blame the gin. All right. We got one final call here. Hi, Miles and company. I was calling because my problem is I want to know if I'm toxic because my friends <laughs> say no, but one of their friends, a mutual new person, heard something that I was doing with my ex and was like, nope, that's toxic as hell. Had, and it had me thinking, am I toxic? <laughs> Love the pod. <laughs> Well, Becky, we have some experience with toxic people. We do. We, <laughs> and, um, we do. I actually, I read this article recently uh, that was about the word toxic and about labeling people toxic. And that now oh. uh, it was somebody, the person who wrote the article, is a great article. Maybe I'll link it in the <laughs> fucking thing. But um, it was somebody being like, I uh, told my friend, my friends were having a conversation. And I was just like, guys, like, let's talk about something else. And I said it and I was like saying it suddenly. And maybe I was a little bit rude. Yeah. But then one of those friends never talked to me ever again. And they labeled <gasps> me toxic. And it's because friend groups now, it's like this idea of <clears throat> you're toxic. Like I can never stay away from you for something that's sort of innocuous. Yeah. And that uh, people like really write each other off. And it was really interesting because I think that mm. I've seen that happen so many times where people are like, yeah, like that person's toxic and like I'm never, I can't be around toxic people as my self care to like <laughs> not be around someone who says that. And uh, it's just interesting. I feel like it's, I don't want to say it is, it's an excuse. Yeah. But I think it's like a good, like, oh yeah, that was a behavior I didn't like. I already yeah. didn't really want to continue this friendship. Right. So you're yeah. toxic. I'm not going to see you anymore. Well, it's sort of like you don't need to announce your departure. It's like this is in <gasps> a, when people say- I do love when people say that. This is an LAX. You don't need to announce the departure. Yeah. I feel similarly about fr like uh, friendships ending, actually. Yeah. It's like friendships, it's okay for people to be, be friends for a while and then to kind of drift apart and- you don't yeah. need to make it into a finale episode of falling out. No. You can just like slowly lose touch and then it's a, doors open maybe later yeah. you become friends again. Yeah. But I think that like sometimes people get into tricky situations where their friendships are like ride or die so hard that it's mm -hmm. like you said something a month ago that, you know, it's like everything needs to be an event. And it's like sometimes people can just kind of fade away and it's like, oh, we haven't yeah. been getting along that much. Let's move on. Yeah. But we're going to decide, judge and jury- <laughs> If this person's toxic, let's go. Let the jury in. 
Hello. You called Perfect Person, and I'm here to call you back and fix your life. I'm here with Becky Habersberger. What's your problem? Where are you calling from? Oh, hi. I'm anonymous, and I'm calling from New Jersey. Got it. Okay. Anonymous from New Jersey. <clears throat> and you're wondering if you're toxic. I've wondered that myself, mm -hmm. and I've decided I can't be. It's impossible. <laughs> Who are you on? Who's joining you in the studio? Uh, Becky Habersberger. It's me. Uh, Oh my God, I love your skincare. Oh my God, thank you. <laughs> That's very sweet. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> um, so what is the behavior? Well, first of all, uh, you've never thought you were toxic. You recently encountered someone new who heard about something you were doing with your ex. Mm -hmm. They thought you were toxic. Give us a situation. Okay, so I dated this guy for three years. Okay. And when we both started dating, we were both in college, mm -hmm. you know, did doing the grind. He had, he had free college and I didn't. Yeah. And then he stopped going because it wasn't his vibe. Sure. And yeah. then I became a, like a head designer for a fashion oh. company. Very cool. Uh, so it's like drop the line. I no, was going up and he was kind of staying at the same level. Okay. Right. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, well, you know, fitness is your thing. Sure. You want to take a certification, become a personal trainer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll support you. No certification. So it's just like, so then we ended up breaking up because I was like, you know, yeah, he's got no drive. I mean, it's, we're just not the same. We're not at the same level. But I mean, the we, the love was still there. Sure. Oh, so that yeah. just kind of sucked. Took like a year off from that relationship. Yeah. And then I was like, you know, she kind of like we text randomly, sporadically here and there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, you know, it's like a year has gone by. It's been enough time. And my friend, my a really good friend of mine who is one of the senior designers for a lingerie brand had a sample sale and I was, and I had time off between two, between my old job and my new job. And I saw this dress and it was marked down for like $20. And I was like, I'm going to buy this dress. Love. I'm going to invite this guy over. Oh, <laughs> you mean, and it's going to be a whole thing, but it was just nice to be next to someone and watching TV mm -hmm. that like we ended up watching four episodes of a pointless <laughs> show. And then it was like my roommates getting back in like 20 minutes. And then it was a really quick in and out, but then we've kind of become like, we hook up here and there sporadically. Uh, when you say it was a really quick in and out, when you say it was a really quick in and out, do you mean that you hooked up really quickly before the roommate came back? Yeah. <laughs> It was just kind of like anonymous. I've never heard that. You, you. I feel like you buttered up every other part of the story besides that. You were like, "Let me watch this show," and it was. A, but it's okay. So you hooked up with your ex, uh -huh. and um, uh, and what was toxic? Well, this person was like that whole thing was so toxic. That's crazy. Like, that's, that's crazy. That's so crazy. That's, that's people not, are people. Yeah. Are just you drew this to... person in. You wore this whole thing. You set up the whole thing. You broke up with them, and you just dragged them back into your clutches. And I was like, everyone's, an, left. everyone's an adult. And also he clearly wanted, no. to, he yeah. clearly wanted to hook up with you. And also like hooking up with your ex is something that people do because it like makes kind of, it makes sense. You shared intimacy with this person and for then three you, years. for three years is a long time. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't think there's anything wrong. And with I mean, you it was through the pandemic. I literally, he lived, yeah. lived with my family and me. I lived with his family yeah, and him. He is, went through, his uncle died. My mom's boyfriend died. It was a whole thing, like a lot of yeah. ups and downs. Oh my god! Oh my gosh! Careers. You see, you can't just like throw it away. Also, th this sounds great. Yeah. Everything, everything about yeah. this sounds totally great. You, you're. It's totally. It makes sense that you broke up with this person because you were like. Hey, I'm just like, you were looking for maybe a little bit more initiative from someone, mm -hmm. which again, like you can't, there can be things that you request in a partner that you don't judge in everyday people. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. you can request in your partner right. that they show initiative because that's something that you're looking for in a partnership. Mm -hmm. But then you can have friends that aren't doing those things, but not without judging them. Like, I think there's a huge difference between committing to someone as a partner. So I think that like, if anyone was like, oh, you like, I don't know. I just think they're different inherently. Like you can ha yeah. have different things in your love life than you have in your friendships. But also you didn't do anything wrong. You, no. you liked this person and then uh, you dated them for a long time and then you hooked up with them. And it sounds kind of great. And now you guys hook up every once in a while? Yeah, every once in a while. I mean, you know, I just have to like check in and be like, hey, just so you know, it's not, this is nothing else. They're just like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like you're open about it. You're being open about it's it. Like, yeah. What's we're gonna, toxic it's like, about check that? In. Let's check in. 
I don't know. They were like, this is so toxic. This is the most toxic thing I've ever heard. What did they say? What did they say was toxic? They were just, I think they were like, you just, because they were, I think they were hung up on the fact that I broke up with him. Yeah. And then was calling him back and then was like. So what? Yeah. I don't know. That's what, that was my thought. And my friend was like, it's kind of toxic. And I was like, it's kind of toxic. Is it? I mean, okay. I guess I could get, I could, I could sympathize with the fact that maybe you broke up with the person, this person. And then you later, how, how long were you guys broken up? A year. Yeah. That's long enough that it doesn't matter. Yeah. I would say if you were calling him like a month after you broke up and were like, I got this sexy dress. Let's do the tango. Cause you're like, I'm looking, I just know. There was no preamble to the sex. He just knew he was coming over and we were going to hang out. Or we were gonna check, but I mean, like, come on. Yeah, this is. Yeah, you know, no, no, cool. hang out. But also, it's a year later. Like everyone's di- a year, a year, in a year. A lot can happen yeah. in a year. Like it, it's just, I don't know. There's nothing wrong with this because I think that yeah, if you break up with someone, you can't then immediately try to be friends with them because mm-hmm. that's like not respecting their thing, and it just makes no sense. No, you gotta, that. you gotta each leave, grow, yeah, whatever. Yeah, totally. You did, but you did that, and it's uh, been a year, and you're like, you know what? I want to get a little something from someone that I like know will give it to me. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with what you've done. No. Nope. And in fact, I'm quite proud. Yeah. I think your other friend oh. is toxic. I think your other friend is toxic. She's for, toxic. Because you know what? She's just seeing that you guys are enjoying each other's company and she's probably jealous. Uh oh. <gasps> this, this was just somebody like a friend of my friends that I met at a bar. Like, cause yeah. we had, because uh, we were getting new, because um, my friend. Finally, kind of, she kind of went from being like a fun boho artist. She sold her soul and joined us in corporate America. So we were having oh, yeah. a corporate party at this yeah. bar. Get that bag. Where we all dressed like corporate. <laughs> fun. I mean, I sold my soul years ago, but sure. she finally joined us. And so this was like one of her friends that I was meeting there. And they were like, hey, what's up? Uh, and I was like, oh, there's this thing I did recently. And then they were like, you toxic motherfucker. And I was like, I don't know you. Yeah, no, that's fucking, no. I, you don't know me. No. Don't talk to me like we're friends. You don't know me. I hate that shit. She's a stranger. When friends of friends try to act like they're friends with me and can like make little digs at me, no way. Yeah. Get out of my fucking face. I can't handle that. Because it's like when I meet new people, so I ha- I'm just like the bare minimum is that I'm unbelievably polite, especially if it's someone that's vouched for by like a close friend. Yeah, I can't make like little jabs at you like I would make to friends I've known for a decade. Yeah, you can be like, oh yeah, you're kind of like that, you know, like that's <sighs> fun because we know and there's a mutual trust there. You can't be meeting new people and being like, yeah, that's so toxic. Okay, cool. No, I was just like, am I? Am I the one? No. Okay. Thank. No. Thank you for validating. No. You're not toxic. Me. Everything no. I needed. One eight hundred. You're not toxic. We validate you. We are validating <laughs> you. Validated. You are not toxic. Keep getting that booty, girl. Yeah. Keep getting that booty. It, two consenting adults can hook up, and it's yeah, fine. yeah, totally fine. Totally fine, and no one. <laughs> it doesn't seem like anyone's feelings were even hurt. It seems like everything was totally fine. Yeah. No. Now it's just become like a thing. I'll just be like, hey, what's what's good? And he's like, not much. Cute. Want to meet up? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's great. Cute. That's really cute and very fun. And hooking up, yeah, if hooking up with exes uh, makes sense. And especially if you're communicative with being like, you know. This isn't going anywhere. This isn't going anywhere. But also like, you can do that and then maybe it does. And then if it doesn't. Maybe. Well, maybe it doesn't. Life's long, baby. Yeah. Don't protect yourself from anything. What? <laughs> <laughs> like I mean like I guess the argument against this is it's like oh it's easy to put on old shoes and like stuff like that feelings can get drummed up Yeah, but I actually disagree with that argument whoever's making it Uh the fuckers Uh and I think that people should do stuff like this whatever you're enjoying yourself this is someone you clearly share intimacy with have fun yeah you're not hurting anyone okay cool congratulations on your baby Miles oh thank you so much I appreciate it yeah we're stoked thanks for calling in and you have a great day okay bye. bye bye Wow. Wow. That friend, by the way, yuck. Who does that? Was she like negging her? Yeah, she was. And like, by the way, I've met people like that in cor- like who are corporate ass people who are like, yeah, yeah people like me because I tell it how it is. <laughs> anyway, yeah, you probably suck. And it's like, no, you're not telling it how it is. You're just being an asshole. Yeah. I also yeah. think like there you can give unsolicited advice, like who doesn't, but like, yeah. it doesn't even sound like she was trying to be like, oh, that sounds like a tough situation. Like, are you sure no feelings are involved? Exactly. That's like she was it. just like, you're toxic. <laughs> yeah. It was so- it, it, Cause it's like, yeah, if I encountered a situation like that and I was trying to give that advice, I'd be like, 
Oh, that's good. I'm glad you guys are having fun. You know, I feel like if that were me, that would be really hard. I have trouble separating that stuff. Yeah. And if someone had just broken up with me, I would really want to go see, you know, like it's soft. Yeah. You got to give it soft. Yeah. She came in too hard. She came too hot. We don't, nobody nags. Nobody we nags. do not stand nagging. No neg. In this house. No neg. Absolutely not. No. Well, Becky, that brings us to our final segment, a show, a segment, a show, <laughs> a segment we like to call Get Real, not associated with the segment Be Real. This is a segment where we force a genuine moment in an effort to learn more about each other and ourselves. Becky. Gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> What's going to happen? <laughs> Woo. Ah, woo. Okay. Those are fun shoes. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel recommended them. They're if nice. you can't tell, they're Those a little belly hats. Thank you. Um, Becky, what is something that you feel proud of yourself for recently? <gasps> recently? Yeah. Hmm. And it could be an activity. It could just be where you're at in your life mm -hmm. um, or something that you were like, I want to try to do that type of thing in the next couple of years, uh, mm -hmm. several years ago. And then you feel like you've gotten closer to what that would be that you're proud of. I feel like recently mm -hmm. I've been very good at communicating with my friend group. Oh, that's huge. Yeah. yeah. Whereas before, maybe there were times where I would mm -hmm. let some things slide or yeah. I would, you know, do something that maybe didn't make someone else happy. Yeah. So I feel like I've gotten more aware and more, <laughs> <laughs> more in the moment of being like, oh, wait, I shouldn't have said that. Or, yeah. hey, that hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. And then moving onward and upward right. from those moments. I think that's really important. And I think also like, yeah, I think that's a good thing to... Um, to focus on. I feel like often with my friend groups, we're pretty communicative, mm -hmm. but uh, I think sometimes, especially with like male friend groups, it's hard to, um, if something is bothering you, it's hard to bring that up mm -hmm. just because typically male friendships do not necessarily bring that up. Um, but I found recently, yeah, in recent years, I felt like, oh, something's bothering me. And I just, if I can bring this up in a soft, empathetic way, Soft, it, not not anything major, really small things, yeah. but it's just like, oh, it always feels better to, if I was like thinking about something, oh, maybe I said this in the wrong way mm -hmm. to apologize or to be like, hey, I'm sorry if this came off X, Y, or Z. I feel like it makes me feel better at night. Yeah, and like remembering that not every like fight or disagreement is like a battle, or I guess yeah. maybe not every disagreement is a fight. Oh, that's huge. You know? I, I've been, yeah. I've been actually focusing on that a lot recently where it's like, yeah, I want to be able to disagree in a way that makes the other pe person feel heard. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, yeah, it's like if they're saying something that I'm just like, yeah, I don't buy with that. Just being like, oh, I can see how you might have felt that way, but I think I probably feel this way. Yeah. It's like adding little words in there to stuff the package so it yeah. doesn't walk around. Yeah. And not making it, you know, life or death or uh, yeah. the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Though sometimes it is. Sometimes you just need to take <laughs> those scissors and you cut that string snip, and you snip, snip. put it in a little garbage can, you yeah. light it on fire and you throw it out. Absolutely. And knowing when to do that is important. That's too. very important. Yeah. I've actually, yeah, I've recently I've been trying to, my new mantra it's just, obviously, I have a lot of serious, well, quote unquote, serious things happening. <laughs> Having a baby, I'm sort of like, you know serious. what I mean? Yeah. yeah, but like, I'm trying to uh, take everything a little bit less seriously. Like I have this show. I'm obviously very excited about it. We're having a baby. We're like, you mm -hmm. know, me and Sarah are living in our house, uh, you know, uh, without a roommate. Like lots yeah. of things. And I'm trying to just be like, it's all gravy, baby. Like this is all bonus. I had lots of like goals for where I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. at, I'm 29 years old. Oh my God, Miles. Oh. I always forget. Well, You're not a 30 birdie yet. <laughs> I <know. laughs> but I like, I'm trying to just be like, oh, it's all bonus extra stuff that I didn't know I would even be able to do half the things that I'm able to do now. So like, mm -hmm. therefore I don't need to take it all so seriously um, because you know, who knows? It could be a freaking firebomb storm tomorrow. Tsunami. <laughs> It could be, but you know what? You've yeah. prepared. prepared. You've had all these years of experiences that have led to this. Exactly. Us sitting in this room. 
<laughs> that have led to us telling that girl what she should get her brother for Christmas. That is your true purpose and goal is. in life. That is. In a way, and, and you know, am I a cult leader? Am I, uh, <laughs> am I a muse, a guru? I mean, other people can say those things, but yes. Um, Becky, thank you so much for doing the show. Thanks for having me. So Absolutely. excited to be here. Yeah. Um, where can people find you and anything to plug? Uh, you can find me at Bexmex2. Mm-hmm. on all socials, except maybe Twitter for <laughs> now. Yeah, well, I don't maybe. know what's going on with that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but it's kind of funny to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bexmex too. Sick. Everywhere you find your socials. Listen to You Can Sit With Us. Yep. Another show I produce. Yeah. That's so right. Support the pods. Support the pods. Um, Becky, uh, it's been a pleasure. Uh, you gave everyone really good advice. Uh, thanks to everyone who's been listening out there. And remember the perfection is only a call away. That was a headgum podcast. <laughs>